Here are some weird things scientists have done. Has science gone too far? Scientists have successfully created the world's first human monkey hybrid at a lab in China. Researchers in the US and Spain traveled to China in order to bypass the laws which prohibit this kind of research in their own countries. They wanted to use animals to create organs for humans as life-saving transplants. They said that creating the hybrid, which they call Chimera, was an important step in the process. The researchers revealed they successfully injected human snails into monkey embryos. Some survived up to 20 days before having to be terminated for ethical concern. Just one of the concerns that have led to this kind of research being restricted in most countries is that it's very difficult to restrict human cell growth to just one organ of interest. If the stem cells escape and create human neurons in the brain of an animal, the ethical concerns would be extreme. In fact, one researcher, Dr. Espuza Belmonte, said one concern with the creation of human animal chimeras is that the chimera will be too human. Even then, the research team said results were very promising and they pledged to continue their experiments using primates. Do you think that scientists should keep monkeying around with this concept? Chinese scientists have successfully grown deer antlers on mice. But why? These scientists claim that this major breakthrough could help humans to one day regrow lost limbs. The researchers were able to successfully identify and extract the cells responsible for the rapid growth of antlers on deers. Then the scientists took these cells and implanted them onto the forehead of the mice. And 45 days later, these mice started growing stumps on their heads that actually contained cartilage and bone. The hope is that one day this procedure could help repair cartilage of bones in humans or possibly even grow back lost limbs. The good news here is that supposedly this doesn't require cutting off the deer antlers. They claim to be able to use the antlers that were shred within five days. Do you think this is awesome or weird? And would you try it out? What happens if you end up looking like Sweet Tooth? Scientists are now attempting to resurrect the first ever animal being brought back from extinction, which is a first in history. The first animal they're trying to bring back is the Tasmanian tiger, which went extinct about 100 years ago. The last captive male died in the Hobart Zoo in 1936. The Tasmanian tiger, also called the Thysaline, disappeared from Tasmania and Australia about 2,000 years ago due to human advancements and hunting. But now scientists in Australia and the U.S. are extremely confident that due to recent advances in genetics, ancient DNA revival, and artificial reproduction, they will be able to bring it back to life. Andrew Pask, who is the professor leading the research, said, I now believe that in 10 years' time, we could have our first baby thysaline since they were hunted to extinction close to a century ago. Here we come, Jurassic World! He also said, We actually owe it to those species to apply the time and the money to return them back to the ecosystem and restore some of these wrongs that we've done in the past. There are quite a bit of mixed reactions amongst the scientific community. Many scientists believe that bringing back a species from extinction is a colossal task, not to mention ethical concerns. Ironically, Professor Andrew Pask is working with a company called Colossal, which is also trying to bring back the woolly mammoth. As of now, the company has resurrected $75 million of funds for their projects. If this experiment were turned out successful, what animal would you want them to bring back? And if this is where you think scientists stop with the craziness, you ain't seen nothing yet. Scientists have revived a 48,000 year old zombie virus from ancient Siberia permafrost. And if that headline isn't crazy enough, just wait till you hear the whole story. They discovered 13 new viruses and three of those viruses were found in a 27,000 year old pile of mammoth doo-doo. These scientists also won a new world record for the oldest revived virus that was returned from a state capable of infecting other organisms. Way to go, nerds. And to make it worse, the lead scientist Jean-Rémy Alabec said, these reanimating viruses are a significant threat to public health. Well, thanks, Jean-Marie. 2020 wasn't bad enough, I guess. Their claim is that due to global warming, ancient viruses of which we have no protection against are thawing out in the Northern Hemisphere and are a serious concern for our future. In fact, in 2016 in Siberia, one kid died while dozens were put in a hospital after a heat wave thawed out the permafrost and unearthed a reindeer carcass which was infected with anthrax decades ago. And 2,300 reindeer actually died in that outbreak also. Permafrost covers one fifth of the Northern Hemisphere in Alaska, Canada, and Russia. NASA scientist Kimberly Miner said, there's a lot going on with the permafrost that is concerned and we need to keep as much of it as frozen. Well, no crap, Kim. I could have saved NASA millions of dollars and told you that. So y'all want to go ice fishing up north? But this gets even crazier. Crazier. This scientist injected himself with a 3.5 million year old bacteria to achieve immortality. And what makes this unbelievable is that this happened 13 years ago and how he's doing today will blow your mind. Russian scientist Dr. Antoly Brokhov revived the bacteria from ancient Siberian permafrost and your boy just said YOLO, why not give it a shot? His thinking was that whatever kept that bacteria alive for so many years might just have the same effect on humans. Dr. Brokhov started running tests on mice, flies, fruit crops, and everyone surprised this bacteria was the opposite of deadly. In fact, it seemed that everything it came in contact with live longer, almost as if it were a cheat code from death. One Russian epidemiologist called it the elixir of life. Since injecting himself, the good old doc said he has higher energy levels and claims that in 13 years, he hasn't been sick one time. So now we know why these scientists have been digging up ice fossils. The question is, do you think they will share these ice cocktails of immortality with us? And if you aren't up for ancient ice cocktails, what about some ancient meat then? Scientists have shocked the world by creating the first ever mammoth meatball. But here's why they are too scared to eat it. In order to create this spaghetti topping, scientists took the DNA from the muscle protein 
hatching of a woolly mammoth. Then they placed it in myoblast stem cells from a sheep, which they replicated growing 20 billion cells. But if you ate your mom's best friend, this could be the last thing you ever ate. One scientist said, we haven't seen this problem for thousands of years, and we have no idea how our immune system would react if we ate it. Kind of like when you eat Taco Bell. But if someone ate it, and what if we seen hair growing all over their body and tusk on their face? Y'all hungry? Well, if not, here's another meat choice. Scientists are manufacturing 3D printed meats with the entire world could soon be eating. It is projected in just 30 years, our ability to produce enough protein through traditional farming is gonna fail. This would lead to extreme malnutrition in many parts of the world. So to prepare for this, scientists are looking into bioprinting meat as a potential solution. But this is also currently being tested in the world. The company Stakeholder Foods is currently 3D printing fish fillets and claims that it has the real texture and taste of real fish. The reason this fish tastes so real and feels so real is that the bioprinted fish is actually created from the stem cells which came from actual fish. But the difference here is that this fish was 3D printed in just a few minutes and was never in the water. The company claims that this process is scalable and could supply the entire world of 3D printed meat. Does this story sound a bit fishy to you? And that's not the only thing scientists can 3D print. Scientists have started 3D printing organs which include lungs, kidneys, and even bladders. It sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie, but this is actually real. This process is called bioprinting and can actually save lives. In 2006, organs were 3D printed and placed in three kids which actually saved their lives. Every day, 17 people around the world die waiting for organ transplants and every 10 minutes, another person is added to the organ waiting list. More than 90% of the people on the waiting list need kidneys and about 1 million people today do need a kidney. So doctors have a solution. They take actual cells from the patient's body then mix it with a gel that kind of looks like glue which they call bio ink. The bio ink is inserted into a special bio 3D printer and that organ is created and you can even choose your own color. Oh, the options that come to my mind right now. Then that organ is placed inside the body. This process takes about four to six weeks. The biggest challenge here though is that these organs do decay over time and will naturally dissolve away inside your body causing no harm. This will require another organ to be made and inserted again. Y'all want some? <sighs> Here's the five most dangerous land animals on every continent. 